Oh, and the last lure is definitely a goodie. An old school spinner bait from Mans, the Undulator. What's interesting about this bait is it's got a three part blade like this that is jointed. And you could almost imagine that this thing probably goes to the water a little bit like a swim bait. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. We have got a fun little Saturday planned for you today. If you tuned in last week, you saw that we got a mega shipment of some old school plastic from our Bassin bud, Patrick, out in California. He sent two priority mail boxes that were literally packed with old school plastics. I'm pretty sure he sent like about 30 pounds of them. Patrick had the great suggestion to do a little retro giveaway and I definitely concur. So I sorted the plastics out into six different mini bags of old school plastic and we are going to be doing six giveaways, that's right, six of them at the end of this video. In addition to the soft plastics, I'm going to throw in one of these for each winner. This is a genuine retro bass and vinyl decal, perfect for your boat, your truck, or maybe your tenement on wheels. We're also going to be doing a, another installment of a new little segment on the channel called the Bassin Bud of the Week, and this week's episode is definitely a hardcore Bassin Bud. But first, we're going to get to a little piece of retro mail that I've been sitting on from our friends over at D's Tackle Box. If you have not subscribed to D's Tackle Box YouTube channel, it is 100% worth a sub and a like. D is an expert lure collector out in East Texas. He and I have some plans to hook up a little bit once the weather cools and do a little retro bass and out his way. He's also a great resource for me anytime I've got a question about an antique lure, especially a headin, and he's got a lot of great content geared toward those kinds of collectors. I have no idea what old D sent me, uh, but it is a solid feeling little priority mail box, and let's do the old retro rattle test. Ooh, little rattles, little metal. This could be a good one. Ooh. And there we go, two weeks in a row. Notes at the top, lucky me. Hey there, Chris. Uh, for people like us that love this old fishing stuff, it's all about the hunt and picking through boxes of old and stinky lures. <laughs> Some may need more recon as far as detailed info, but we hope you enjoy them. P.S. The Mechanical Frog by Jensen is from Kai, my son. What? And the bag on card is from Lady Z. They wanted to throw something in for your two Bassin buddies. No way. Oh man, well, as we've said before, there uh, could be anything in there. Oh, I'm pretty pumped about this one. Ooh, right out of the gates. Uh, I see whew, pretty glorious, glorious little frog legs. Oh, wow. Check that thing out. I That feels really solid. I almost can't imagine that actually floats. It's got a pretty cool looking uh, cupped metal bill. Extends to the bottom of the bait like a lot of the old school crankbaits did. Pair of treble hooks. And check out those little legs. I am definitely going to have to find out more about this little crankbait before I even think about throwing it, but I've got a feeling I ain't gonna be. Ooh, here's a nice one. Uh, new in package, Bagley. I believe this one's called the mullet, if I'm correct. Let's see here. 
Uh, yeah, I think that is the Bagley mullet, and that is a really nice topwater walk-in bait. It's got a pair of hooks. I don't know if those are saltwater hooks, but that is totally a saltwater color. The old school red head with a white body. Not a color that I initially liked throwing as a kiddo, but as sort of the years went by and you start trying new colors, I absolutely love, love this color, not just for saltwater, but also for freshwater. That is a very cool one. Good looking Bagley bait. Wow, nice. Ooh. Snag hopper lures. What the heck is this? Oh man, this looks like some sort of spinner. And I see a, a weight and a wire arm and a treble hook and there's just a ton going on there. Check that out. Let's see what it says about this thing. Uh, positive hooking, 80% less snags. Well, that I could use. Changeable weight and no line twist. It's got a changeable weight. Yep, 80% less snags. No line twist from Snag Hopper Lures in Mansfield, Ohio. I wonder how that thing works. That is a really wild bait. I think that this metal arm has something to do with the snag prevention of the bait. And yeah, definitely the, this is what we have to do a little bit more research on for sure. Oh, old school from Cream Lures. Uh, still in Tyler, Texas. I need to get out there probably sooner than later and do a little plant tour. But check that out. That is a pack of old school cream. Sort of looks like a man's stingray grub. Clearly some sort of saltwater bait. Almost looks like that's a little what? A little purple with a white tail. And that looks like a nice little pen pack. Check those out. I love the old cream logo. They still use the worm with the crown on it quite a bit, but this is definitely some nice old school packaging. And I think these lures are gonna stay in it, maybe. Ooh, unless I can sneak one out. Oh, we're cracked on the side so I can show you this. So yeah, that totally looks like a man's stingray grub. Nice purple with a little white tail. says cream right on the belly. What do we have next? Oh, another uh, new old stock pack, the old Tom Man's Jelly Worm. What I love about the Jelly Worms back in the day is, you know, now you can buy like, you know, the mega pack. You get 10, you get 20, you get 50, 100. Back then, all you needed was four of them or five of them on a plastic card like this. <laughs> I don't know what color this one is. It looks black. I think that's probably a blackberry, if I had to guess. Uh, it looks like an eight inch worm. And yep, that is the old five pack for <laughs> one dollar. So let's check this one out. Looks like uh, there's a couple of these in here. It says the original Crooked Creek Baits. Looks like some sort of jigging spoon in a white color. But then on the bottom, it's got a Uncle Josh Pork Frog logo. So not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> Back of the bait, what does that say? Uh, Mike's Bait and Tackle uh, from Flippin' Arkansas. Pretty interesting. That actually would totally work on some school and bass. I know the bass and a lot of the lakes that I fish have really been schooling as of late, getting their late summer feed on. So I totally would be throwing that. I don't know, I'd be putting a Uncle Josh number 11 on there, but uh, with two of those new in the pack, I feel pretty good ripping at least one of those open. Got another one from Cream, and I feel like that has to be just about the smallest cream I've ever seen. <laughs> tiny, tiny cream worm. Almost is like a trout worm or something, isn't it? That looks like it's pre-rigged with some spinner action. And I'm definitely gonna have to take a closer look at that one with the old readers on. Ah, reaction lures. Uh, looks like a topwater frog. 
sort of like a Stanley Ribbit almost. Couple of dual paddle tails, which I always like in a topwater frog. To see on the back here, Reaction Lures Company, uh, Manny, Louisiana, and there are some of the different varieties from Reaction Lures available. Nice. Gil Raker from Zeta Bait. Oh, check out that. Actually, that is really kind of ironic. Um, literally, just before I started filming this episode, I was checking out the old eBay, and there's a listing for some of these in 8-inch curly tail blue. That kind of looks like an 8-inch curly tail blue. That is pretty wild. Uh, so I might go ahead and grab one of those uh, just because. But in the meantime, D, thank you for sending those. This is pretty cool. Let's check this out. So I've never really thrown the gill raker. I think it is similar to a culprit in a lot of ways as far as the look and the feel of the bait. Uh, yeah, there it is. That is totally an 8-incher for sure. Really nice curly tail. That looks like it's sort of a translucent blue-green. I can't exactly tell what color that is in the studio with the Ray-Bans on. But that is definitely an old school looking worm and <laughs> too funny. Literally like 10 minutes ago on eBay, I was checking these out. So thank you, D, for saving me the trip. <laughs> Man, he just sent a ton of stuff. Ooh, the old scum frog, the weedless popper frog from scum frog. That's a cool one. Looks like there's two of them in here. And I think one is the popper, one is the knot. Uh, back before you had such high-tech engineering and a topwater frog, and you could probably throw it on a spinning rod, <laughs> we had baits like this. So what does this say on the back? Uh, this is made from the Southern Lure Company in Columbus, Mississippi. When fish strikes, wait two seconds before setting the hook. Indeed. Oh, I see a good one from Cotton Cordell. I absolutely love this uh, sort of discount version of the old school Cotton Cordell baits. They were called Pro Lures, but I'm pretty sure these were like in the dollar bin or maybe the $3 bin back in the day. This line had a lot of the familiar styles and shapes of Cotton Cordell Lures, but in a more scaled down version, at least as far as packaging goes, I think the color patterns were a little bit more simplistic and maybe that was where the price tag came in. I think these also might have been built outside the US, which might have contributed to the lower price. This one looks like a Cotton Cordell spot or maybe the minnow spot. And that's probably a what? Eh, a quarter ounce or maybe less bait. A nice bone with a orange belly. But yeah, just real simple packaging, just sort of black on orange, and then there's usually nothing on the back of these baits. All right, keep on digging through. Ah, interesting. So we've got an old school H&H &H spinner. This one does look pretty old. I wonder where this one was made. Let's see. Does it say, does it say? Okay, so this is made in Honduras, and it was H&H &H in Baton Rouge. So I don't know if this is one of the ones that Michael Bacon would have made the skirt for, but eh, there's a pretty good chance that he did. That is a nice bait that's got the uh, spinner on it, orange head, and it comes with usually a dual hook. Pretty cool little spinner bait that we have actually not done a retro bass in episode on. And this thing has literally caught probably millions of fish, so it might be about time to do an old H&H &H episode. And because the H&H &H headquarters is not too far from me, I might have to make a trip out of it. Still digging through this, another Cotton Cordell. Ooh, look at that. Like the old, uh, I don't know if this is early 80s packaging, but it's got the nice box with the three fish logo. And looks like we've got a jointed red fin. Woof! That is a nice color. Look at that dark back, green and yellow side with a little white belly. And almost, I would dare say, what, saltwater-ish hooks? 
nice looking jointed red fin. Red fins of this era, I don't know what material this is. I don't know if this is butyrate or what, but I definitely feel like the plastic has a different feel and sound than the newer ones. The newer ones almost seem a little bit more high pitched tinny. This has almost more of a, a low thump to it, but I like it. And what I like about these old baits is a lot of them came with an insert talking about the lure itself and how to fish it. And here is a little instruction guide for the jointed red fin. <laughs> Very cool. Maybe I need to post a picture of that on the old Retro Bass in Instagram. Man, the lures just keep on coming. <laughs> Lockhart Lures, the angler's key to success. That looks like some version of a man's little George from Lockhart Lures. I uh, don't know a darn thing about Lockhart Lures, but that looks like a little fish catcher for sure. I actually love to fish a man's little George style bait for school and fish. It casts a mile, it gets down really quick, and I feel like when those fish are on that offshore bait fish bite, they absolutely clobber lures like this. Ah, another H&H. &H. This one looks even more old school, and I have a suspicion this could be one of the Bacon's versions of the H&H. &H. I will have to ask Michael Bacon next time I see him out in Shreveport, which will hopefully be soon. Uh, another little pack of worms here. Looks like some nice carded Mr. Twisters. Those are probably three inch phenoms. Interesting size of bait. That actually could be really good on some of the little creeks that I fish, especially because the water is super, super low. And that's a nice little, what, black with a fire tail on it. Looks like, what is that, a uh, 10, 15, 20 pack? I don't know. Pretty cool. Ooh, another one uh, of the old Mr. Twister Phenom style worm. Looks like a three inch in a strawberry color. And oh, very, very cool. I definitely notice a little bit of a Texas theme with this box and not surprising since D lives in Texas. Check it out from Night Lores The Tube. This looks like the three inch model of the tube in probably my favorite color of this bait, the old translucent blue. I remember there's a really cool video of Jimmy Houston doing some worming with this exact bait, I think in the bigger size, probably the six inch. What's pretty cool about this bait is even though it is definitely an OG bait that was discontinued many, many years ago, it was recently reintroduced by Cream Lures and is available today online and pretty much any Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's that you go to. Here's a little diagram of how the bait fishes. What's cool about it is because of the tube and the air that this bait catches, it definitely stands upright. I've got a feeling this would be a really good bait in sort of a Ned Rig situation. Imagine throwing this little sucker on a Ned head, that little body sitting upright and those little tentacles just sort of doing their thing. Oh, here's a nice one from Bomber Lures, the old flare hair. Ah, look at this. So it is a nice little jig head with a pair of curly tails. Oh, it's got one curly tail and one straight tail. Now, my first assumption is this would be a saltwater bait for redfish and speckled trout, but Ah, that kind of looks like a worming jig that you could use for largemouth bass as well, so long as you didn't have a ton of obstructions because it's, of course, not weedless. Uh, nice looking old bait from Bomber. Man, I got to find out where D finds these, like, soon. All right. Uh, here's a nice one from old KVD, Strike King Pro Model, a discontinued crankbait for sure. And, ooh, look at that. That is a nice little flat lip on it. Sort of looks like the smaller version of the Cotton Cordell Big O. Uh, but, of course, from Strike King in a nice little chartreuse chad color. Oh, and the last lure is definitely a goodie. 
An old school spinner bait from Mans, the Undulator. Yep, that is Hank Parker right up there endorsing this bait. This was a unique spinner bait that I've not actually fished with a ton. I've got one, but I haven't thrown it a ton just because I have so many spinner baits. What's interesting about this bait is it's got a three part blade like this that is jointed. And you could almost imagine that this thing probably goes to the water a little bit like a swim bait. It is definitely a big old blade, so you'd want those fish to be keyed in on some bigger bait fish, but that is a good looking bait indeed. Whew. And that's one I actually might have to rip open and throw because I don't have one this size. Well, D, thank you for the care pack, man. We are definitely putting some of these baits to use. And I think I might have to bring a few of these when I come out east to see you and we do a little retro bassin outside of Houston. We're gonna get on to the retro bassin mega giveaway in just a second. But first, we're gonna pause for a new little segment we do on the channel called the Retro Bassin Bassin Butt of the Week. This week's Bass and Bud of the Week is Jackson Harris from Eufaula, Alabama. Happened to follow him on the old Instagram, and I couldn't help but notice that he and I share a lot of the same style. Jackson likes to fish it old school, and his favorite vintage lure is the man's jelly worm. He also sent me some photos of a fishing excursion up north where he was fishing at old school and catching some really nice smallies with some vintage baits including a Jensen extractor that he got as part of a Bass and Bud starter kit. I don't know, I think you get a bonus point for the extractor, a bonus point for the hat, and maybe two bonus points for that sweet mustache. If you do want to throw your name in the ring for Bass and Bud of the Week honors, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and post a picture on Instagram or send it to me. Hashtag fish it old school and tag me at Retro Bassin. Drum roll, please. Now it is time for the Retro Bass and Mega Giveaway. Uh, first off, big shout out to Patrick. Thanks again for loading us up with a ton of old school plastics last week. And this week, I've got all the comments from that video loaded in a random comment selector. We're going to go ahead and do this thing six times and pick six separate winners. I will ship this to you free of charge anywhere in the continental United States. And if you happen to be a bass and bud outside of that geography, well, if you pick up the ship and I will definitely get the goods your way. So let's get on it. We got six of these to do. Let us start with numero uno. Oh, who won the first one? Looks like it is John Rambo, winner number one of the old school plastic kit. Nice. All right, John, well, go ahead and shoot me a PM on Instagram or Facebook, and we will get that out to you. Ooh, pick another winner, number two. Oh. <laughs> and winner of the second, Sluggo721. All right, Sluggo, hit me up, and we'll get the goods to you. All right, let's knock out winner number three. I'll try to keep it up here. <laughs> All right, the winner of the third pack of old school plastics is uh, Cameron Geary. Says he loves the uh, culprit worms. Well, buddy, I'm gonna send some your way. Is that three? That's three, right? All right, three more to go. All right, let's pick winner number four. Who is it? <laughs> uh, D's Tackle Box. Well, I guess that's appropriate, isn't it? D sends me a box of old school gold, and he's a winner. So, <laughs> well, D, thanks for uh, tuning in as always. Thanks for the comment, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to throw in a few extras for you, but I'm definitely going to get some old baits your way. <laughs> that's too funny. That's four, right? That's, yeah, that's four. All right, let's go for number five. Who we got? Uh, the number five winner is Rich Parks. All right. 
This is actually a great comment. He says, those choppers are great chopped up if you like a little more garlic on your pizza. Well, Rich, some choppers are going to be heading your way, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's do the last and final giveaway of this Retro Bassin episode right now. And the sixth and final winner is Hooked on Bassin Cats. He says, wow, he really hooked you up. And it makes me happy seeing bass guys share with other bass guys. Well, we're going to pay it forward one more step and send you a pack of old school plastics. Well, I'm going to hurry up and get those plastics boxed up this weekend because I've got a few big fish excursions planned for next week. That's right. It might seem hard to believe, but Old Retro is getting back on the water. Um, I've got a couple of episodes that I have been meaning to film and some that are in sort of various stages of production. So if all goes well, if the weather holds, I'm going to be on the lakes uh, probably two or three days next week. And soon to follow will be some nice old school on the water content. In the meantime, if you're looking for some more old school fishing content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here next Saturday. And until then... Keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.